Coach Heichel's post-game press conference. Coach will make an opening statement, and we will go into questions. Just raise your hand, and I will call on you. Go. Um, appreciate our fans. Awesome uh, sellout uh, for homecoming, UT Martin, and uh, obviously um, a great environment uh, at the beginning of the football game. Uh, great opportunity that we had an opportunity to celebrate homecoming. Welcome back so many, uh, obviously just you know, former students, but uh, a ton of VFLs for us, uh, former players as well. And at the same time, have an opportunity to celebrate, um, you know, the the uh, the history of uh, of Title IX, and uh, really, as much as anything, uh, uh, also Coach Summit's legacy here at uh, at the University of Tennessee and everything that she did for Tennessee and, and women's athletics in general. So, open it up for questions. David Pascal, Josh, can you talk about uh, Princeton's all-around game and how much of that was in? Uh, was that this off season, or did, did y'all consider that a year ago as far as the, the rushing and the passing for him? Yeah, just a, a skill set uh, that he's uniquely had and, and uh, something that we worked on uh, during the off season, year two, being more comfortable with uh, our personnel. And obviously, he did a, a really nice job today. Adam. So, <coughs> Josh, some teams can sort of sleepwalk through games like this, but it seemed like your, your team had emotions in the game. Is that something they did naturally, something you had to? Um, I thought, you know, I said it late in the week that I thought our guys prepared the right way. Um, the urgency of, of understanding, you know, you got to be a consistent competitor. Emotionally, there might be a difference, um, you know, from week to week just in the energy inside the stadium, but your competitive nature can't can't change. Uh, I thought our ones did uh, did a really nice job all three phases of the game. 
you know, close on a couple punt returns to actually breaking them defensively, offensively, defensively after the first drive, uh, offensively uh, for the most part consistent. Um, I didn't think our young guys performed the way that I thought that they were capable of. And, and uh, we talked a lot about our, everybody inside of our program taking a step forward. It's not that they didn't prepare the right way, but uh, it's different being out there. And, and just because the guy in front of you makes a play doesn't mean that you're going to make it. So a uh, great opportunity for them to see themselves on film, to learn from it, and to get better. And uh, we're going to need those guys as we go through the back half of this journey. <coughs> Um, he's just one of our players. Uh, awesome for him that he's paid the price, went through adversity, getting injured, uh, has come back. He invested the right way while he was injured. It's a great lesson for everybody inside of our program. He's competed the right way, and then he gets his opportunity. Uh, did a lot of really good things today, and, and obviously that pick early in the football game was a momentum turner. Uh, Coach, uh, Hayden set the record today for consecutive games with touchdown pass, breaking two short. Just what's that say about him to do that in a uh, you know, short amount of time? He seems to have the quarterback here. And how big is that for, for this program as well? Yeah, if I, I saw Heath before the game. If I would have known he, known he was breaking it today, or I would have uh, gave uh, Heath a little bit of grief um, before the football game. But um, uh, you know, just Hendon's consistency and growth from. Uh, from the time that he's gotten here, and, and you guys have seen it from the time that he's been able to be the, the starting quarterback. And it's a great lesson for everybody to continue to invest. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Uh, he's playing at uh, an elite level right now, and um, excited you know, that he's playing that way. But just you know how he handles himself and, and the maturity that he has, that's important for our football team. Coach, you guys, uh, Jamal and Christian didn't play. Brandon gets hurt second drive. He's down there with, with Lloyd Wright and, and Rashawn Slane. What can you say about those guys and, and have an update on, on them? Yeah, obviously, uh, we got uh, thinner. Uh, we were thin going into the game. Just felt like uh, those guys, uh, a week of rest would help them and benefit them on the back half. Um, and um, uh, then, obviously, Brandon's deal. Uh, he's going to be fine. Um, just felt like it was the right decision medically uh, to hold him out here uh, from that point in, of the injury and, and uh, should be ready to roll. Um, next guy up. And this guy took advantage of his opportunity and, and played really well. Uh, we got to continue to develop on the back end. Uh, we can be better. Today, a lot of that was after the first drive was, was with our, our young guys, and um, we need to be, be better. He has, has shown some good things as a punt returner. He still looks, looks like he's settling in on defense. Yeah, just a, a guy that you know just hasn't had a ton of opportunities. Um, you know, injured most of training camp and <coughs> early part of the season, obviously missing a, a bunch of time. and. Um, you know, for him just continuing to play and, and um, you know, get more comfortable and, and be better in just fundamentals, technique, eye discipline, and, and uh, then let his athleticism take over from that. Rob did off. Is Coach Jalen <coughs> nicknamed one off the school record for touchdown reception? He's not even November yet. Did you see him stepping up like this with, with Cedric out? I, I mean, you don't. We thought he would perform at a really high level. I said that, and, and we thought that at the beginning of the season. Uh, obviously, last week was a massive week. The last, you know, two or three weeks have been huge for him, and and um, continues to play really good football. He's been great um, in everything that we're asking him to do. Um, you know, did I, what I say that I saw him breaking the school record and touchdowns. I don't even know what the number is. What is it? Okay. I mean, I don't think you ever think about those things you, you know you just think about the player himself and and uh, you know he's had good opportunities but he's been prepared to take advantage of those opportunities playing at a really high level Patrick talked about D um, it's three weeks ago where he's kind of had a, a big punt return he's kind of flipped the field position how big is that just to, from that component of the game to have a guy back there that you know can do that it, it's huge because it, it changes the way the game's played field position you end up in four down territory. It changes the momentum within the game. Um, D's done a really good job of tracking the football, catching the football, being a really good decision maker back there. He's been electric when the ball is in his hands. He's got a natural feel for space, for leverage, and how to set up blocks. Um, the other guys on that unit have stepped up their game too. Uh, I like the way that the 10 other guys are performing too. Just their ability to, uh, you know, to, to fit in and, and play with great technique and, and do a good job of blocking. Even with today's big win, Coach, um, is there anything that the team needs to work on before next weekend? Yeah, there's a, a lot of things. Fundamentals, technique, um, discipline, um, you know, 
so many things in all three phases of the game. Um, it's a constant evolution. Good teams get better throughout the course of the season. We got to continue to get better. Jimmy West and Dan. Just what you think of Squirrel White's performance? Squat. I thought Squirrel did did a great job. Obviously, the middle of the football field, the slot position, had a huge day. Jalen with seven um, receptions, Squirrel with five. <coughs> Massive yardage from both of them, just structurally how they played. <clears throat> the squirrel from the from the jump uh, did a really nice job. Um, you know, read coverage the right way, and and uh, then went and made competitive plays. The deep ball coming back to it and going up and high pointing it. He continues to get better in in what we're doing. Uh, a couple of quick things. One, how long <coughs> do you think it has when you look at Princeton Sanders as an option there at fullback or running back to see that he actually maybe could do that? Us understanding that he, you know, came in in that position, then just seeing him do it on air, you know, in one day, <clears throat> his physical skill set that he had led you to believe that he could do that. Um, but then seeing him actually, you know, take a mesh handoff and be able to read things um, is pretty quickly. In that slot position, I know that you know Bayless is obviously so important in that position. <coughs> to get high, and now squirrel some too, to, to step in there and do that. What is it about that role that, that is so important and seems to have success in this offense? Well, uh, just, you know, structures change and, and leverages change and how you want to attack them based on, you know, how they're loading the box, whatever it might be. Um, it's important that you have somebody that can operate and function in, in the middle of the field and apply pressure to the defense. And those two guys played really well today. Obviously, Jalen's um, – Played at a really high level all year, all year long, and certainly, you know, the last month of the season, he's done a phenomenal job. And and uh, it's important that you have balance because they can't just key on one guy. If it's just one guy in your offense, they're going to find a way to bracket, to uh, roll coverage, and and uh, try to eliminate him from the game. Um, some really good things, some things that, uh, you know, just as they watch the tape, that they can function at a, a higher level. Really small things add up to, to the big things at that position. Uh, all in all, pleased with a lot of it, but there's some things that we definitely can get get better at. Just in the back, uh, Josh, when did you realize that Princeton fans are going to give a ball like that to Hyatt? <laughs> yeah, um, knew that, uh, um, you know, certainly this summer, but even last year, and, and uh, <clears throat> he's got the ability to throw it. So it was a special throw, actually. You know, they were bringing pressure, the ability to get it out of his hands quickly, and throw an accurate ball to, to Jalen down the football field. Big play. Josh, Brian Kelly, this late this past week on his radio show, kind of caused a stir when he said that he thought instant replay was ruining football. I mean, there were a lot of replays out there today. I don't think anybody notices a four-hour game when it's like last week. But do you think – do you have a view on that one way or another? Do you feel like sometimes replays make a game seem like it's forever? Yeah, sure, sure the, the length of the game, right? Um, but at the end of the day, don't we all – Want everybody to get as much right as you, as you possibly can. Let the players on the field decide it. You know, so um, you know, I, I think it's an important part of the game. Anything else for coach? All right. Thank you. We'll have players shortly. Appreciate it, guys.
All right, everyone, from your left to right, we have Stolen Page, Trinity Saint, and William Wright. Please raise your hand for questions, and I'll call on you. Austin, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to David. First, obviously, yeah, the, the, two, the two runs, but the throw, uh, when, when they when they called that in, you know, it, it take me kind of through the mindset just for me. I mean, was there, I'm sure there's a lot of excitement there. And then were you were you able to watch, you know, Jalen from the jumbo Jumbotron? Were you watching field level? What, what were you looking at? Well, I was definitely excited about it. Um, Something we've been practicing, something that we've been uh, talking about, definitely talking about uh, this week. And um, I was able to watch Jalen catch it <clears throat> after the hit. Uh, I was so happy that he caught it, and uh, I'm proud of him. <laughs> Were there nerves as soon as – did you get nervous when that play call came in? And how many times in practice have you thrown it that far? No, uh, I wasn't I wasn't nervous. Um, I joke around and throw the ball all the time in practice, throw it far and different stuff like that. And – Coach, uh, Coach Hosley always be like, man, you got an arm. And, uh, you know, it's just, we just having fun with it. And, uh, Coach, uh, whenever my number was called for it, I was, I was ready for it. Uh, we'll go to Patrick and then Ben. Uh, William, I guess uh, playing today was probably not as big deal as taking it for the last four plays against Alabama. Can you go back to last week and get thrown in there? And did that lead to some confidence for you to go make a play to today? <clears throat> yeah, so it definitely did because um, – well, I had confidence going into last week too, just the way we prepare, because I, I I gotta treat every rep as a game and practice like it's like a game rep. So I take advantage of those opportunities. So when I get thrown in the game, I'm more confident, and that definitely, I mean, those plays definitely let me to have more confidence this game too, though. Ben, what would you see on that play uh, that that allowed you to kick it off and then stolen? What what do you think of really making that play and how you've been able to fit in these last two games back there? Yeah, so. Uh, I guess I got kind of a lucky call from the defense player from Coach Banks on that one because it was more of a vision coverage. So I was getting my eyes on the quarterback, saw the route, saw the throw, and just was able to jump it. And I guess it just – I was on the sideline when I saw him catch it, and I was just happy for him, you know. Uh, but even before the play, we are over there coaching him up, telling him, like, hey, Willie, coming to you, they're coming to you, coming to you. And lo and behold, they ended up throwing his way, and he ended up making the play, finishing, and uh, the rest is history. We'll go to Eric, and then we'll go to Adam, and then we'll go back to David. William, in spring, you, you were getting a ton of reps because there were a lot of guys who were out. How big was that uh, time for you to kind of grow as a player and prepare yourself for, for this, uh, this time the last two weeks? Right. So that goes back to me taking advantage of the opportunities I get because, I mean, I didn't know if I was going to get that many reps during spring. So that was just a good time for me to prepare and go against the ones a lot and then build a lot of confidence myself and build a lot of confidence with the coach staff with me to be able to show what I can do. Adam, Princeton, was there any thought that, you know, you got some SEC games coming that maybe that type of play, that trick play, would be held off for a future game? Were you surprised it was called in this game? So uh, I wasn't surprised, man. Me and Coach have been talking about this this play for a while now. Um, <clears throat> you know, just preparation. Uh, whenever it's called, it's called, and you have to be ready for it. And like I said earlier, just when the number was called for the play, I was ready. Was there any fear that it would never be called? <laughs> so, uh, I don't think it was no fear, you know, whatever it is, you know, just want to help my team win. That's the main thing. So, back to David, I'm going to Reese and then Dr. Patrick. So, when y'all came in 10th in the country against the run, I think y'all were averaging, allowing 93 a game. They got they only had 76. Why have y'all been so effective in run defense this year, do you think? Well, that's always a point of emphasis for us on the defense is in order to play good defense, you got to play good run defense first. Because <clears throat> the teams can just, you know, run the ball down your throat, it's kind of hard for you to win. So that was just always a point of emphasis. You know, we go over like their top run plays, you know, stuff that stuff to look for and <coughs> just different keys throughout the week. So that's probably the bit, been the biggest thing for us, you know, just going into each game. Reese, so when I saw after your first sack, you honored your fraternity. Uh, why do you honor your fraternity and what do they mean to you? Oh, uh, man, they, they mean the world to me. Like, they're my brothers. Aside from the guys who I go to war with every Saturday, 
they're my brothers. You know, I talk to them every chance that I get. So every time I make a big play, you know, I'm not just doing it for for myself. I'm not just doing it for these guys. I'm, not, I'm doing it for the people, you know, in the stands, the the fans as well. So just, you know, giving them a little shout out on the sideline. Patrick, moving back to Austin. Will, you want every interception looked like a lot of the sidelines put on the field to celebrate. You kind of mocked you a little bit. What was, what was that moment like with everybody coming out there and celebrating that moment with you? Uh, it was crazy. It was a special moment for me just because, I mean, I feel like that was the effect of all the work and preparation I put into the game. So it was a special moment. Awesome. Preston, you now thrown, run, caught one. What, what's there left for you to accomplish individually? I mean, is, there, is there something you've not done to this point in your career you'd like to get done in the next five? <laughs> Uh, I, I think the main thing is is just helping the, the team win, honestly. Whatever I can do to help the team win, whether it's throwing the ball, running the ball, catching the ball, you know, whatever it is, being on punt, <clears throat> going down there and hitting somebody in the face, uh, whatever it is, I just want to just want to help them win. That's the main thing. Yeah, we'll do two more with it. Jimmy and we'll finish with Ben. President, how, how far can you throw a football? <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I'll be in practice joking around, throwing it from the 50, hitting the goal post. Uh, then I try to scoot back, hit the goal post. But uh, I honestly don't know. I never just tried to see how long I could actually throw it. And when you run that play in practice, how often do you complete it? I complete it every time. <laughs> every time. How many times you run it? We ran it, uh, we ran it a couple of times. So I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, it wasn't just. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's definitely fun, man. Just going back there. Ball. I, got, I got two for you. Who throws the best deep ball? Are you handed in Joe? And then <laughs> I'm assuming the, 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 the touchdown pass beats the rushing touchdowns, but the rushing touchdowns, you kind of had to bounce outside and make your way into the end zone. Did, did you prefer the rushing touchdown over the passing touchdown? Uh, I say, man, I'm just happy that we got in the end zone and the pass was completed. Oh. Uh, between me, Joe, and Hendon, I would say myself. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> I say Joe, man. Joe's a special player, man. And uh, he has an arm. He has a crazy arm, as I know a lot of people know. But uh, out of all those quarterbacks, man, those quarterbacks are great. Great leaders, great brothers, and people that this team really looks up to. Thanks, guys. Well, Hendon, for you guys here in a few minutes. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you, Joe.
My answers aren't very exciting.
everyone. Raise your hand. We'll take questions for Hendon Hooker and Ramel Keaton. We'll start right there, and then we'll go to David. Uh, Hendon, you broke Keith Schuler's record today. Did you, I know he was at the game. Did you get a chance to talk to him yet? And just kind of what's that feel like for you to be able to do that? Uh, it's a blessing. Um, I haven't got a chance to talk to Keith Schuler yet. Um, I was talking to, to Navy, his son, uh, yesterday, and he was telling me, hey, you got to grab a picture with my dad uh, after you break his record. Um, and then last week, talking to Heath, he was telling me, hey, go break that record. So it's an honor to, um, you know, get that encouragement from him and to actually go out there and do it. Hey. And then given the excitement of last week's game and the attention, y'all had a lot to handle this week. How would you say y'all handled everything coming off of the win that y'all just had against Bama? I thought we handled it well. Um, guys came in and got to work as we usually do. Another day at the office, as we, as we uh, you know, love to say, but it's, it's true. Uh, we come in every day and we have this chip on our shoulder and we have this mindset that we want to get better every day. And that's what we wanted to do today, come out and, and get better in this game. Patrick and then Wes. And then are you uh, worried at all about Princeton coming through here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, we, see, <laughs> we, see, we see Pete throw the ball all the time. And it's a thing of beauty. He has an extremely strong arm and he's accurate. Um, so it was, it was cool to see him in a game-like situation, get him a, a nice throw and a touchdown as well. Ramel, when y'all seems like when y'all scheme up stuff every week, I mean, you're not just open like you're wide open on a lot of plays. A lot of y'all are. How how much confidence do y'all have in the staff for setting up these plays to, to get y'all in so much space like this? Um, we have uh, a lot of confidence in our staff because you know we practice well, what we're going to do all the time and like going all the way back to like the off season, like us putting in work, it just gives us that extra confidence. So it's just like we just out here doing what we do. So it's okay. nothing. Oh my God, it's nothing new. That's all I have to say. Little page and then Adam. Um, for Hendon, you know, obviously Ball Nation, it, it's it's massive and it runs deep. And to be on the field today and to get that note from that little kid today, just how special was that interaction? What does it mean to you to know that you really impact a lot of kids, all ages, really? Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. Um, one thing I want to do is is be a positive light in my community and in people's lives. So. For me to receive a note from a, from a kid that's um, you know admiring me or looking up to me is a blessing. Um, hopefully, I'm I'm um, you know doing what what he what he wants to do one day and um, just showing him that anything is possible and that you can do anything when you when you put the hard work in it. Adam, Hendon, it would be easy for some teams to sort of sleepwalk through a game like this. You guys looked like you had a lot of emotion. I thought Jalen Hyatt pretty fired up. Is that something that's just natural with this team that you can get up for any game? Yes, sir. Um, you know, like I said before, just approaching it um, as as any other game, as we do um, on a day-to-day -day basis, and just communicating that we want to go out here and and really, you know, kind of I don't really know how to put it, but we want to go out here and and be assertive and play aggressive as we normally do. Um, you know, we take no team lightly. We uh, prepare the same way every day. So um, you know, we're going to celebrate this one, and on Monday we'll come back in and hit the ground running. Romero, did you feel a sense of needing to step up after Cedric Tillman's injury? Uh, yeah, because you know I don't want to let, uh, let the team down because you know he's a, he was a big part of the offense, so I feel like I had to step in and like help the offense. I mean, even though if it's, if it's not like all ran through me, I just got to do my part to make sure that we keep winning. So yeah. And then what have you seen about Romero's development? Mm -hmm. Mel is an extremely hard worker. Um, you know, plenty of days I've. I've came into the facility and seen Mel in there catching jugs by himself on the automatic jug and he's holding the button. Um, also, you know, coming in and, and getting in extra film, ask, asking questions, uh, you know, when we're in practice. Um, we're always communicating to make sure that we're on the same page, but, uh, you know, extremely proud of Mel and, um, you know, the, the hard work that he's put in, and you see it paying off. Ben? Ben, a lot of the younger receivers got in the game today. Just what did you see from them? And Mm -hmm. uh, Nimrod got to play for the first time this season. What did you see from the younger guys? Yeah, I love I love seeing the guy the young guys come in and and kind of showcase you know what they've been working on. Um, many times you know us older guys are out on the field and out on the you know in game like situations. So to actually see them in game like situations and see them out there moving freely and and thinking for themselves and having fun as well, um, it's it's a beautiful thing when you get to you know take the field with your with your recruiting class. Um, to so so to see those guys go out there and make plays is a, a thing of beauty. Even with the big win today, um, is there anything you think needs to be worked on before next week? Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work. We're never um, going to be complacent, and we're never going to think that we figured it out. Um, we want to come in every day and, and get better and, and progress our game and our thought process to be, um, you know, a top team in the nation. 
David and then Patrick. This can be for either one of you guys. Y'all have basically played a couple of four-hour games. I don't, I don't know how many people notice it when it's like Bama, but today it kind of seemed like it drug a little bit. When they do have a lot of replays, what do you, what's it like out there when it, when, it, when it is a game that has a lot of replays? Do y'all actually catch your breath and, and wind up not getting that tired because you have so much time to rest when, these, when there are all these stoppages? Um, I don't know about catch your breath because we, we go so fast. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't even seem like, you know, we're getting a break. Um, it's just like, a, okay, um, a, a, a quick hiatus, and then we're, we're right back to it. So um, it, it definitely drags out, but I enjoy every moment of it, um, being out there on the, on the sideline or in the game, you know, encouraging my teammates and, and competing. Uh, you know, we're all competitors, and we just want to go out there and, and have a good time while we compete. Ronell, since uh, since you've been playing for Cedric, how, how what's been the dynamic? Has he been helping you? Has he been sort of giving you advice? Kind of what's the dynamic? How's he been since? since oh, yeah. Yeah, like Ced, Ced's in every meeting. He gonna give us tips on like what he do to like get open. You can just like look at the film what he did to get open, and you can you can just use what he did, put it in your own style. So like, it's not like oh, we like missing Ced, but I mean we are missing Ced, but it's like anybody can be able to step up. And like it should be like that, and everybody should prepare, like you know they the starter or whatever it is. So you know if somebody do go down, it's one play away, and like you got to step up and help the team. So yeah. Oh, two more. I'll go to Reed. Ramel, uh, when you scored your second touchdown back here, sorry, uh, when you scored your second touchdown. You did the windshield wiper thing with your fingers. <laughs> what, what, what was that? You know what Antonio Brown is? Yeah. Yeah. He he made up that dance at the concert. It's called put that on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Second question, Ramel. Uh, Jalen spoke about it earlier, but Kelsey Pope's always one of the first ones to greet you guys on the sideline after you score a touchdown. What does it mean to have a wide receivers coach that's so involved in embracing you guys after scores? Yeah, it's it's fun having Pope around, man. It's just like fun, like watching him, like his energy. Like we up like fifty, <coughs> and he's still on us. Like we down like thirty. So it's it's fun just watching him play, man. I mean, I'm, I'm coach. My bad. We got time for one more. If anyone wants it, Hopkins. Through seven games, you guys have scored more points than the 2018, 19, and 20 seasons did in the full season. Um, just take me kind of through, you know, you were here before, just this offense, what makes it so special? And then, and then for you, like, I know when you made the decision to come here, it was a different staff, but, you know, just kind of meshing with all this and running with it. You want to talk? Um, I think it's, it's just the, the factor that we get to play free and, and be ourselves. Um, you know, we're not super uptight and we're not forced, you know, to go out there and, and try to do something that we don't want to do. Um, we're, we're free to make our own decisions and we're free to, you know, go out there and, and compete at a high level and have fun. Uh, that's something that Coach Hype wants us to do, go out there, play loose, have fun and play fast. And uh, that's what we do on a daily basis. Yeah, like, go, going back to, like, the 2019, 2018 season, like, that team versus this team now is like we, we seem more focused. Everybody putting in the extra work. Like you see, you can see it all coming together on both sides of the ball. So that's a good thing. And just like everybody, they, they don't want to feel like how they felt back then. So it's like it gives us an um, extra chip, and you know we just rolling, rolling with it. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's it for today, everybody. Appreciate Thank y'all. You.